Thank you. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting agenda on Monday, May 9th, 2016. It's now 6 p.m. Please join Vice Mayor Laura Tano in the Pledge of Allegiance and stay standing for the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lord, as we meet tonight, we ask you for your guidance and your support and your wisdom as we make our decisions for the best interests of our city and our community. We ask for special prayers for those who serve our community at home and abroad, and a special prayer and special guidance to those mothers having just had Mother's Day and grandmothers and those who care for our young. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Vice Mayor. We're all here this evening, and Councilman Stiff is via the telephone. Are you there, Councilman Stiff? Yes, Mayor, I am. Thank you. All right. Welcome. And thank you for taking the time. I know it's not easy when you're away like this. All right. We have four communication items tonight, and the first one is John Gaio, uh, Customer Service Supervisor, will introduce Claudia Newdigate, Supervisor with Arizona Public Services, who will discuss plans for the closure of the Goodyear office as well as the customer service options going forward. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you for having us here tonight. Uh, Claudia Newgate is here from APS to talk about those changes. And then if you have any questions for staff, I'll be available for those. So. Thank you. Oh, with that, I'll bring up Claudia. Welcome, Claudia. Thank you Thank for you. coming. I wanted to talk with you tonight about uh, the plans that we have to close the Goodyear APS office. We have it scheduled to close at the end of the business day on Friday, August 26th. And this is part of APS's strategy as customers are embracing new technologies and ways of transacting business with us, as well as um, a increase in them self-serving through IVR and APS.com. So we have a strategy that includes offices around the state. This year we will be closing seven business offices in the state of Arizona. We closed three of them already. That was the Glendale office, Surprise office, and Casa Grande. Goodyear is the next one that is scheduled to close at the end of August. The Chandler office will close the end of September, <clears throat> Bisbee also in September, and San Luis in December. We have a number of offices throughout the state where they have reduced their days from five days a week, Monday through Friday, eight to five. Now they're open four days a week, four hours a day. <clears throat> Part of the reason for this um, is because the cost for the transactions in the business office to provide face-to-face -face service are very costly. They range anywhere between $2.50 per transaction to over $12 per transaction, depending upon the location. So it's very costly. So first I wanna tell you that none of our employees are being affected. Um, nobody is losing their job because of this change. Uh, the employees have all had an option to either move to a work at home situation or they could transfer to another available um, job that was open in the company. So we have seen through the closures that have already happened that the employees have actually taken advantage of opportunities that they otherwise would not have considered. So it's really been a great development for many of the employees to move on to other, other opportunities. As far as the Goodyear employees, because many of them are known um, here in the community, two of them are gonna go to an at-home status, working from home, and one of them is gonna transfer to the Copper Square office, which is one of the offices that's gonna remain open. So the two offices that we will have that remain open in the metro area are the North Valley office, which is at Tatum and Bell, and the Copper Square office, which is downtown on First Street in Jefferson, in the Talking Stick um, Resort Arena. So some of the things that we have done um, in preparing our customers for this change is that we have a communications plan and 
<clears throat> it includes a variety of different ways to touch those customers. We have some handouts that we're providing in the offices that are proactively um, initiated with discussions with our customers that are uh, helping them to choose some different types of payment options in the future. So we're looking at what their pattern of payment history is and what might be a good option based on their circumstances. Um, we are also doing a direct mail, which will begin for the customers in the Goodyear area. It's gonna go out the week of July 11th and it's gonna go out to all customers that had a transaction face-to-face -face in the Goodyear office in the last three months. In that direct mail, it's gonna promote the different types of options that they have moving forward. And then we'll also enclose three postage paid envelopes so that if they wanna start mailing the payments in, they can do so. <coughs> We're also reaching out to the different uh, agencies in the community, such as Salvation Army and St. Vincent de Paul and any CAP offices. And we're proactively working with them to put them in contact directly with our CAPS team so that as they want to make payments on customers' accounts, they have a, a personal contact at APS so that they can still continue that, that business for them. Uh, we are also promoting the electronic agency guarantees as well for those agencies who might not be using that tool today. And that's a way that they can go online and they can guarantee those funds and it electronically transfers from the agency's account to the customer's account. We're working with the city of Goodyear on signage. Um, in our other locations, they were standalone APS offices. And so APS created all of their signage through our communications department. But we're working closely with the city of Goodyear um, so that um, some of their brand is on there as far as um, what's going to happen to City of Goodyear, customers that still want to come in and pay their water bill there. Um, and we're, we're careful that we don't want to confuse the customers between the APS messaging and the city's messaging. So I'm working with John on that, and we're making some decisions on what signage is appropriate where. <clears throat> but it's gonna consist of a variety of different things where they'll have some video messaging on the display in the lobby. There's gonna be flyers and posters and there'll be a standee in the lobby that APS will have um, during the last 30 days of service to get the customer's attention. The APS alternatives that we are encouraging customers to use, of course, are gonna be the ones that are of no cost to them which include uh, making a payment check by phone or paying on APS.com. They can also sign up for SurePay or AutoPay to have the funds taken directly out of their bank account. Uh, we have expanded retail locations where many customers can pay other bills as well. Um, Walmart and CVS will be taking APS payments. And we are gonna be starting a pilot. Um, it hasn't started yet, but we're gonna be doing a pilot with four Food City locations. And one of those that's being targeted is at Dysert and Van Buren. So that would be an option for customers as well. And then the last option is a kiosk, cash kiosk in the Circle K stores. And so we're working with our vendor, which is Tio. And they will also, during the last 30 days, bring a kiosk into the lobby in Goodyear so that our associates can help the customer walk them through how to use that, that uh, technology to make a payment. Uh, we also have the night drop that is shared with the city of Goodyear. So customers currently can put in water payments as well as their APS payments. And because the city of Goodyear is going to be keeping the night drop open, we are proactively taking and making personal contact with all of the APS customers that are using that as a means to make payment today so that we can get them switched over to another payment option before those would no longer be accepted there. And we do expect that there'll still be some customers that put an APS bill in there after APS is gone. And so we will provide the city with a box of postage paid envelopes also that they can go ahead and send those on to APS. So um, at this point, um, we're just working closely with the city. Um, our employees that work in that office are tied to the community 
and they will continue to maintain those contacts as well as APS will continue to keep a, a presence in the community through the partnering that we've done in the past. We, so really, we really appreciate you coming tonight and giving us this briefing. Uh, there's a lot of questions and I, I think it answered a lot of questions uh, from this dais. I don't know if there was a question she didn't answer. Everybody, I did not. I just want to thank you very much. And it, it, it looks like you've really reached out to all corners. Um, so um, I know uh, there will still be regrets that you're not going to be there any longer. You know that. Yes. We get used to something like that. It's nice yes. having you by there and, and having you take care of that. But we appreciate everything your staff has done and that APS has done. And so um, it's nice. You can see how cooperative our city is in making sure that any of the loose ends we're going to help you follow up on so thank you very much for coming tonight well you've been um, it's been a pleasure working with the people that we've partnered with um, they've made this um, very easy for us to um, administer this um, I'll just close with two last things one is um, it is hard when you see something closed that's been there for a number of years and it is an adjustment for the customers we closed the Buckeye office unexpectedly um, last year and we we learned a lot of things through that closure that have helped us to make this process a little better going forward. But we found that within the th first 30 days, more than 50% of those customers were already using self-serve payment options. So we, we've seen that customer behavior change very quickly. And um, I had one more thing to say, and I forgot what it was, so... Well, that's all right. It happens to me all the time. Don't feel badly, okay? Um, so if you don't have any other questions, um, I can be reached. Um, John has my contact information, so we'll continue to work closely to, um, oh, I know what it was. Um, I, we were also thinking um, we're going to talk to John to see if this is something he wants to consider, but since two of the associates are going to work from home, we could still have somebody that actually worked out of that location that first week after we closed just to have that communication with customers if the city feels that would be beneficial. Great. Thank so you. So we'd like to do anything we can to make this process go smooth. We appreciate that. Thank you for coming. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I, I'm sorry. We did have a late question here. May I ask a Councilman, one question, yeah, please? Campo? Yes. Is there a mechanism in place? for those folks who have historically paid here in our city hall office uh, in the event that they don't get cut off, if they can't figure out where to go? Are you, do you anticipate any one of those folks being affected? We do not, um, and that's based on what we found <laughs> with the closures that we've already done so far. Um, because what we will do is we're, we're already talking about this with every customer that's coming in, and we're providing them a number of options and then explaining to them, too, depending upon which option they choose, how quickly that payment will post. For those customers that do tend to carry a two-month bill, we're making sure that we're referring them to the, the channels where those payments will post immediately. Okay, and the nearest location in what in the in Goodyear to us will be Food City and Avondale, correct? That will be one. Um, the, it, do you have a CBS in? Yes, we do. Okay, so a CBS will also work. Um, we also are launching an app. So for a lot of customers that have a smartphone, they'll be able to download the app oh, that's and they'll great. be able to pay right through that as well. That's so right. we're continuing to add those new technologies as well. Yeah. Um, in the event that somebody is mistakenly disconnected for non-payment and it was a result of this transition and them not really being able to locate the closest place, we're working with those customers. We'll get them back on, educate them on the other payment options going forward. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you once again. Okay. Thank you. The next item at 4.2 is a communication item to recognize the volunteers who recently completed the Community Emergency Response Team, known to all of us as CERT training. Othello Newbell, Emergency Manager, and Tanya Tanner, Community Education Coordinator, to present. And boy, we've got a big group up here tonight. Look at that class. We are so excited. Um, so, Tanya, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor and Council. 
Uh -huh. Just spread out, so on both sides. Uh -huh. We, we want to see each of your shining faces and bright eyes here. <laughs> Mayor and Council, it is definitely my pleasure to bring you this graduating class of spring 2016 of our CERT class. We had 28 registered, 21 showed up the first night, and 21 graduated. Wow. So that was a huge success. That's nice. <laughs> this group really did come together. They, they were prepared. They were ready. They um, intermingled. They got to know their areas. And so I'm going to just quickly say their first names because I would butcher their last names. And also, once I do that, then uh, I'm going to tell you about the communities that they come from. And so maybe y'all can just kind of raise your hand with the different communities as I mentioned them, because there are several communities. So we have Deb, Connie, Robert, and Sherry Church. We have Thomas, Cindy, Bettina, Robert, Donald, Martina, Philip, Roger, Ron, Lynn, Forrest, Patty, Justin, William, Neil, Steve, and Nadai. And so the communities that they represent are from Cantamia. Oh, that's good. Cantamia folks. Uh, Pebble Creek, Centera, Palm Valley, Glenmont Estates, Estrella, Canyon Trails. And we did, we let in a few stragglers. We did have a Phoenix. <laughs> we also had an Avondale and then our infamous we had two from Verado uh, because you know really what we wanted in an emergency we also need a place to retreat to so you know we thought we, we better play nice with others I'm so, gonna hang out there <laughs> yeah yeah it's a good place so again the, this group really did uh, take command They've already, some of them already came out and helped me with the smoke alarm walk that we performed just that next weekend after we graduated on uh, April 14th. Uh, and I really want to recognize our instructors too, because without our volunteer instructors, uh, there's no way myself or Othell could, we don't want to attempt to do this by ourselves. So John Farrell and uh, Anthony Martin. Anthony is definitely, he's incognito, is usually in a blue attire and then John Farrell was one of our past CERT members who had come up and uh, became an instructor and so I think really with this group especially the ones who have their CERT shirt on and their badges I think they're going to be potential uh, uh, instructors <laughs> so we're going to have some good um, good potential there also Janine Van Leeuwen who couldn't come with be here tonight Bob Marshall he's been with the city over 20 years he's a great instructor with for us Darren Green uh, one of our battalion chiefs even came out with his daughter and did our moulage. Oh, so there's nice. a whole other talent that Darren Green has that we, we discovered, <coughs> the hidden talent. And also Craig Stolberg. Uh, Sam Debus, of course, Maureen Carney with my staff. Uh, couldn't do it without him. We did have some uh, interesting uh, individuals this time, too, from the city who came and were our victims. Uh, Karen Fonsworth and her family, outstanding. Russ Wilburn. Jackie Berenz and Kayla from finance department too. So we had some, uh, we had some interesting uh, victims to say the least. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's really it. We, like I said, a great group. Uh, I believe we'll see a lot more from this area. They've already, I won't say that I've been bombarded with emails, but I have received several emails of what's next. So we don't want that emergency to be next. So we're going to come up with other items that we'll do some training with. Well, we're, we're relieved with that kind of response, knowing if anything ever happened, that these are our protectors uh, and directors. So uh, we thank them very much. Mr. Nobel, you don't have anything to say tonight? That's not like you. Madam Mayor and Council, well, we just transitioned, making sure that Tanya had this down pat. Uh, so wonderful class that we have, uh, very good group. And so I just want to say it's been a pleasure. Thank you all very much for all of the support that you've given the emergency management. I'm sure that you will continue to give emergency management. I really do appreciate it. I just want to say that uh, you all have done a very good job of spoiling me when I talk to emergency managers around the valley 
They don't have the relationship with city management or with their mayor and council that I was afforded. Um, maybe that's a benefit of not working directly for you. I don't know. Maybe it's because I have a, a layer uh, fire chief to uh, sort of keep me covered. But I've been fortunate to have two fire chiefs that have been very uh, beneficial to me growing as an emergency manager, Chief Gaylord and Chief Louise. So just thank you all very much, and we'll see you all around real soon. Let's give them a round of applause here. And thank you. And I don't know if you arranged for a picture for them or yes. what. Can we just do a quick group shot over here? I'm sorry, what? All in one area. to say that so this is it so no it's not Thank you again. And I just want the council to know that Mr. Newbell will be back on August 1st, and there will be a farewell presentation, I'm sure. So you uh, probably have to, yes, I got Mayor, the Mayor, if I may, I, I, I tried to uh, just real quickly hit that with you. This is uh, Othell Newbill, Tim Newbill's last presentation to council. Um, he is retiring August 1st, but this will be the last time he's in front of you formally. Okay. I did not get that message for the when he wrap here. I'm sorry. So we're going to miss you. I'll be around. Okay. All right. Thanks Thank again. You. Bye, Tim. All right. The next item, 4.3, is a communication item. It is a proclamation of recognizing the week of May 16th, 2016, as Infrastructure Week. Rebecca Zook, Engineering Director, will present. And after, then I will present to you. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I am here to request recognition of May 16th as Infrastructure Week. I'm here uh, from the Engineering Department, but I'm also, uh, I would love to have um, other departments up here with me, but I got selected to come up. Uh, public works, IT, parks, and other departments that do uh, put in and install and have capital improvements associated with our infrastructure. The main tenet of Infrastructure Week is investing in our economy. And what's so special about that is the city of Goodyear ha has a primary theme that came out of our retreat, which is taking care of our own. And we just completed our uh, budget presentations and our capital program for 10 years, and we saw the themes where council was really focused on our own infrastructure, our own city, our own economy, from pavement management to parks to water and sewer. Uh, and we are currently working on the integrated water master plan. So this is um, a wonderful uh, focus, and one of which the city of Goodyear uh, truly believes in. So with that, Mayor, uh, we're ready for the proclamation. Proclamation Infrastructure Week, May 16th to the 23rd, 2016. Whereas the, good, uh, the city of Goodyear relies on critical infrastructure, including our roads, bridges, and our railroads and transit system, our ports and our airports, our pipes, our water systems, our reliable power supply, and our access to broadband, well, it's a connectivity to the regional, national, and global economy. Whereas this infrastructure enhances our local and our regional economy, our quality of life, our safety, our sense of community. Whereas de decades of underfunding and deferred maintenance, well, it's pushed back the infrastructure across our country to the brink of a national crisis with preventable catastrophe failures occurring in communities nationwide. 
America's poorly funded infrastructure and transportation systems are more than a drag on the economy. They can be harmful into our health and safety, even though tragedies resulting from infrastructure failures are most often preventable with adequate investment. Every dollar invested in infrastructure generates $2 in economic output. I just wanted to say that one more time. Every dollar invested in infrastructure generates nearly $2 in economic output. To grow our economy, whereas to grow our economy, keep America safe, strengthen our communities, we need all levels of government and the private sector to work together and to rebuild and repair our nation's infrastructure. Infrastructure Week 2016 has been established to highlight infrastructure investment needs in our community and other communities throughout the country and to recognize and continue leadership at the federal, state, and local levels to address our nation's pressing infrastructure challenges, and we have many. Infrastructure Week is being recognized across the nation the week of May 16, 2016. Now, therefore, it be resolved that I, Georgia Lord, the city, mayor of the city of Goodyear, Arizona, do proclaim the week May 16th to the 23rd, 2016, as Infrastructure Week, and officially recognize and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, officially recognize that despite fiscal challenges, it is important to dedicate sufficient resources to transportation and infrastructure investments in our community. Given under my hand in these free United States in the city of Goodyear on the 9th day of May 2016, to which I have caused the seal of the city of Goodyear to be affixed and have made this proclamation public. Thank you for all you do in engineering. And now we're at 4.4, 4, is a communication item, Proclamation Week of May 15th to the 21st, 2016, as EMS Week in the city of Goodyear. Chief? Good evening, Mayor. Paul Louise, he will present. Good evening, Mayor. How are you? Uh, not as cool as Infrastructure Week, um, but certainly as important. You mean it's not as cool as that? Well, I don't know. They get a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> Anyways, uh, during the week of uh, May 16th through the 21st, the fire department will celebrate uh, EMS week. The fire service has a rich history of protecting the health and safety of our communities through an all hazards response model that includes delivery of pre-hospital emergency care. 72% of our call volume is for EMS related calls. So when citizens access the 911 system, they are accessing a professional and efficient system of firefighters that are cross trained as EMTs and as paramedics. Our firefighters have the training and resources given to you by, by your council uh, to respond and mitigate virtually any type of emergency. We are exceptionally trained, ready to respond, and community focused. So, Mayor? So it's not as exciting as engineering? I bet there's a whole room and might get up and uh, debate that one. I guess they haven't been to your house yet. Oh, okay. So Emergency Medical Services Week, May 15th to the 21st, 2016. Whereas emergency medical services is a vital public service. Whereas the members of Goodyear Fire Department, they're ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and the recovery rate of those who have experienced sudden illness and injury. And whereas the emergency medical services system consists of emergency physicians, emergency nurses, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, firefighters, educators, and administrators, and so many others. Whereas the members of the emergency medical services team of the Central Arizona Life Safety Systems Council engage in thousands of hours of specialized training, continuing in education to enhance their life-saving skills. Whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value, and I mean the value, and the accomplishments of the members of the Goodyear Fire Department by designating Emergency Medical Service Week. Therefore, I, George Lohr, the mayor of the city of Goodyear, in recognition of this event, 
do we hereby proclaim the week of May 15th to the 21st, 2016 as Emergency Medical Services Week? Given under my hand in these free United States in the city of Goodyear on the 9th day of May 2016, to which I have caused the seal of the city of Goodyear to be affixed and have made this proclamation public. Congratulations. Now is the time for citizens who would like to address the City Council on any non-agenda items. Do we have any cards? No, Mayor. Does anyone in the audience like to speak? You might like to, but are you coming forward? Yes, please come forward. State your name and your address, please. And as you come up, I will review this. You, uh, council will listen to your comments. They may take any one of the following. They can respond to criticism. Request the staff investigate and report on the matter. Request that the matter be scheduled on a future agenda. You have three minutes. We have all these rules, so but we'll help guide you, all right? The yellow light and the buzzer will let you know you have 30 seconds of your three minutes to speak. And before you speak, please identify yourself by clearly stating your record, your name, and address. Thank you. First of all, thank you. You have the Lord, floor. Council members. Could you bring the, a little bit louder? A little bit louder? Is yeah, that better? that's good. Sorry. Uh, first of all, thanks for hearing me out, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Michael Jones. I live at 14434 West Indianola. It's a subdivision in Palm Valley mm -hmm. called Desert Vista. And I had some questions. My wife and I, we're both retired military out here, and uh, we're, for no better term, a snowbirds. And... Uh, each year we head back to Iowa where we have a tree farm that I'd like to say I'm making money on, but I'm not. And uh, we, we suspend all our utilities and we have somebody watch out after our place. Everything goes pretty smooth, except for this last time we, we went and um, we tried to suspend our, our trash service because we don't use it for six months out of the year. And we were told that we had to shut our water off, but we like our landscaping, so we weren't able to suspend our trash service. And I understand that there are two separate uh, government or uh, contractors that the city uses for, one's Liberty Utilities, the other one is uh, Waste Management. I don't see how they're tied together. And I was hoping that we would be able to suspend our, our trash service when we leave this year. Well, first of all, I, I, you're finished. I don't want to interrupt you. I'm finished. Thank you so much for coming, and I want to thank you for the service that you provided the United States by serving. Um, now, the second part of it is is that um, how can we – we want to explain to him the rule now that has, or how do you want me to handle that? Mayor, members of the council, uh, since this item is not on the agenda, we would be glad to follow up with you, uh, Mr. Jones, and – uh, so we have staff here that can uh, talk to you further and certainly after this meeting as well. So if we can, if you can give your contact information um, uh, over here, we'd very much appreciate that and, and we'll get back with you as far as how our program works. Yes, and we can understand your dilemma, uh, but I think that uh, somebody counseling might help on this, all right? Thank you so much for coming forth. Are there any other speaker cards or anybody in the audience before we go on? All right. Will the city clerk please read the consent agenda items 6.1 through 6.8 by title only, please? Item 6.1, approved draft minutes from a regular meeting held on April 25th, 2016. Item 6.2, approve a request from Andrea Lukowitz, agent for Bear Tracks Holdings, LLC, DBA, Black Bear Diner, number 44, for a new Series 12 liquor license, number 12078, a606 located at 980 North Dysart Road, Goodyear, Arizona, generally located near the southwest corner of Dysart Road and the I-10 interchange. Item 6.3, adopt resolution number 16-1766, approving a second amended and restated development agreement for Las Brisas Phase 2 regarding the development of a parcel of land generally located near the northeast corner of Perryville Road and Broadway Road, providing for authorization and direction to take actions and execute documents necessary 
to carry out intent of resolution and the second amended and restated development agreement for Las Brisas phase two and providing for an effective date. Item 6.4, accept the assignment rider of the Union Pacific Railroad pipeline crossing agreement for the 30 inch waterline crossing located just north of MC 85 and west of Litchfield Road. Item 6.5, Approve a 90-day extension of the Australia Mountain Ranch Parcel 9.8 Final Plat Approval, extending the approval date to August 9, 2016. Item 6.6, .6, approve a 90-day extension of the West Calistoga Drive Map of Dedication Approval, extending the approval date to August 9, 2016. Item 6.7, approve the Map of Dedication for North 159th Avenue and West McDowell Road, subject to stipulations. Item 6.8, adopt resolution 16-1768, amending resolution number 16-1744, dated March 28, 2016, to correct a Scrivener's error, delegating certain authority to the finance director and other officers of the city to effectuate such amendment, authorizing the taking of all other actions necessary to the consummation of the transactions contemplated by resolution number 16-17. 44 as amended and declaring an emergency. Thank you very much. Does anyone from the public wish to remove an item on the consent agenda? Does anyone on the council wish to remove an item on the consent agenda? Yes, Mayor 6.3. 6.3? Is it just information? Uh, possibly, yes. Or do you want me to take it off? Uh, yeah, I want some information. Can we have someone to come forth on 6.3? Could Rebecca come up? Yes, Mayor and Councilmember Campbell. Okay, my question is, we had this conversation two weeks ago of trying to get all of these agreements moving forward. So we've done four. This is the fifth one. When are we going to see La Pravada, El Cidro, and La Benicia, the rest of them? Where are they in the pipeline, and why can't we just get them all at once? And thank you very much for your que uh, question, Councilmember Campbell. And we are working on all of the other agreements. So we have a total of um, 13 agreements coming before you eventually. My hope is that the next group will be on May 23rd. And again, it really comes down to finalizing some of the points of the individual agreements, as well as getting the signatures uh, from the uh, owners and the lenders and having copies of those in hand so that we can put them into the council packet so we have everything bef before you. So okay, it's, I'm, it's simply a, a, just a matter of time, and we are absolutely working on all of those. Are you following them yourself, sort yes. of? Okay. Yes. That's encouraging, because it's been seven months since we've given the direction, and we're still waiting to get them all together. And it's just, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see them done before we go on break, if at all possible. Absolutely. Um, and again, my goal is the 23rd, but we could have one or two um, lag okay. behind. Okay. Uh, but uh, Sarah and I are working diligently along with the clerk's office to make sure we get all of the information in there. So it's really a, a team effort with uh, city staff as well as uh, the customers. Okay. Is it your intention to bring them all back on consent again? Because the four, two weeks ago, were not on consent, but this one is. Uh, that is correct. If, if, if it is acceptable to council, we would like to put them on consent. Uh, so there's, since there's really nothing additional that I could add. Okay. Thank you very much. Rebecca, I think we have uh, one more from uh, Councilman Pazillo. I think I know the answer, but just for the record, there, um, this particular one does not devi deviate from the core agreement, correct? That is correct. It does not. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank right. you, Rebecca. Thank you. Nice? Thank you. Thank okay. you, Mary. Could I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. I heard a motion from uh, Councilman Bazillo and a second by Councilman Osborne. Um, so I'm going to ask for roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Loritano? Aye. Council Member Osborne? Aye. Council Member Pazillo? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Stipp? Aye. Council Member Homan? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes 7 0. Thank you very much. Let's go on to the business. I'd like to remind Council to refrain from asking questions under the until the staff's presentations are complete and there is a motion on the table. So we'll start with uh, the business item, item 
consider adopting resolution number 16-1758, approving an intergovernmental agreement with the Flood Control District of Maricopa County. Our city manager, Brian Dockey, will present, and he also will introduce and recognize some other individuals. Thank you, Mayor, members of the Council. If I knew that I was going to compete uh, with Infrastructure Week and EMS Week, I probably would not be here tonight. <clears throat> That's a tough act to follow. But tonight, uh, it's exciting. We're coming to you tonight to, for your consideration to adopt a resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement <clears throat> with Flood Control, which is a district of Maricopa County. What this does, it'll transfer approximately 129 acres from the county to the city. So tonight... <clears throat> We actually have uh, several items we're going to go through. We'll, we'll try and be as judicious as possible. Uh, but this is a first step in really a long-term process uh, to get to the vision of the community to uh, provide a central recreation corridor as well as a health and wellness area as well. And the, what we'll be talking about is the basins, and I'll have some maps here in a minute. But it's highly visible on, on Interstate 10 right now. Um, so it's currently being used only as a flood control feature, and the goal is is to really turn that into something that can be used by the public. So we're excited about that. I call it uh, turning it from an eyesore into an asset, and, and that is our goal. So tonight you'll have a background of the basins. We'll have key, uh, We'll talk about the key stakeholders. Brought it to the point where council's consideration will be tonight and then the county will be considering it next week. We'll have remarks from one of the key stakeholders, uh, Stan Holm, CEO of Abrazo West Campus. We have a special guest in the chairperson um, for the Board of Supervisors and Clint Hickman. Uh, we will provide conceptual ideas for the basins, and finally, we'll talk uh, about uh, possible governance um, structures as provided by Arizona State University. So this map here, and I'll, I'll try and use a, the mouse to let you follow along here. So the basins we're talking about, they're uh, e uh, west of Dysert uh, and east of uh, Bullard Wash, so it's all, or excuse me, Bullard Avenue, so it's this section in through here, all north of Interstate 10. And you'll notice in here the proximity of Abrazo West Campus right here, as well as Cancer Treatment Centers of America. And fortuitously, there happens to be a, a, an underpass under I-10 right here as well. So we're going to go in a little bit of history. I'm not going to go back too far uh, other than uh, it, it was in the late 1980s that uh, Air, Arizona Department of Transportation really took control of the basins. There was a lot of uh, dirt that was used out of that for completion of Interstate 10, which happened in the late 80s and, and uh, finished up in 1990. So they owned the property at that point. It was in 2005 that ADOT approached the county uh, to convey the basins to them. And you'll see on the chart here how that came to be in terms of the percentage of participation. You notice that the total cost at that time was $554,000 on the top line there right up here. And then you'll see that the, those that participated, they were given the opportunity to still have an easement that allowed for drainage into these basins off of properties. You notice a primary uh, uh, stakeholder was Suncor at the time, uh, Goodyear, Litchfield, Park, Avondale. And then certainly uh, flood control also had uh, monetary contributions as well. So that's a, that's a breakdown on that. By this action, if the council approves it and the county approves it, we will still honor the easements that allow drainage into the basins. Okay, a little more of a history lesson here. It was in April 2009 we decided to embark on a park and ride. Uh, you have a rendering right here of part of the park and ride structure. This is actually an aerial of it. And then we superimposed the map of the basin. So the park and ride is right here, and right next door to it are the basins that we're talking about, at least that section of the basins. Um, the purchase was for $1.567 million. We did acquire that from the county flood control district for 12.39 acres. Now, 
One thing you may not know, this allows for parking for 400, and these, this additional five acres is within that 12.39 acres, so that can expand to 800 cars um, in the future, but probably not till 2025. So summer of 2014, it was a great summer. I had an opportunity where uh, we would not be here tonight, but for the really the interest of the stakeholders, you'll see most of them up on this slide right here. But the individual uh, that I, I draw attention to is a gentleman by the name of John Kuhn, Kuhn uh, and he's a current principal at John D. Kuhn Ventures, LLC, Wellness Space Place Concepts. Well, he approached the hospital, Stan Home in particular, the CEO of the hospital, and had a vision for what might happen with these basins if converted from what they are uh, today to something that could be uh, a wellness park tomorrow. So got the ball rolling. It then came to um, Stan Home, and then he, uh, he and others approached the city, and it's, it's been a, a great ride ever since. But uh, tonight I have asked Stan to provide a few comments, but Stan, before you jump up here, I do want to point out, you'll, you'll notice on here that we have, you know, Brazo here, Cancer Treatment Centers of America. We actually, actually have Alan Swain in the audience from CTCA. Alan, if you can raise your hand right here. Great partners in this as well. Um, uh, Adelante, while not represented here tonight, have been very much a part of the discussions behind the scenes. Uh, Goodyear right here. And I'm, all I will say here is anyone uh, that, in, uh, that works for the city, if you're involved with this, raise your hands really high. Nice. Yep, several. And um, so been a, been a lot of uh, activity behind the scenes as well. And then certainly the county off over here, they own the property. <laughs> so, you know, uh, and tonight we'll have an opportunity to, to hear from the uh, chair, chairman um, but I also wanted to point out uh, uh, Ken Proxa, who is the Deputy Director for Flood Control. And Ken, I know you're back there. I feel your eyes in the back of my head. If you could just raise your right there. Welcome. Um, so very involved, too. And uh, so we'll hear more from the county in a few minutes. But uh, uh, at this time, I do want to bring Stan home up here, uh, the CEO of Abraza West Campus, to say a few remarks. Welcome, Mr. Holm. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Mayor, members of the council, thank you for this opportunity to speak to you about really what I consider two visions coming together. I had the privilege uh, around that same time frame of being part of a task force for the city of Goodyear when you were looking at your five-year strategic plan, when you were bringing in uh, business leaders in the community to talk about what we would need in the future. Uh, during those discussions, we also talked about the voice of our community members when they had indicated they'd like to see more parks and recreation uh, amenities within the city of Goodyear and simultaneously around that same time as when as Brian mentioned John Kuhn approached me and said really Stan look at those basins between you and I-10 uh, with your hospital wouldn't it be great if we looked at potential wellness uh, walking park etc and like no other time in the history of healthcare, uh, are all of us more focused on pre injury prevention and wellness and looking at population health and when you look at those and tie that together, to really look at a community that's focused on community health and well-being, uh, tied that vision into what you were discussing then with the voice of the community on we need more access to parks and recreation, uh, it would look like a perfect partnership. And then when we were thinking, okay, that would be a nice thing in front of Abrazo West, but it became much bigger than our hospital uh, very quickly. When we, I mentioned to Matt, who's the CEO at uh, CTCA, and obviously he and I partner in a lot of things, uh, two great um, uh, attributes for the city. Amazingly, as Brian mentioned, there was a uh, thoroughfare underpass of I-10 connecting these basins to Cancer Treatment Center, which literally created that uh, nice connection for us uh, in the vision of uh, and partnering with CTCA. And then through your strategic planning, talking about the medical corridor, it's not necessarily just the acute care services or the outpatient services that we do within our two facilities, but also both of us focusing on the wellness of the community. And then we looked at Adelante. Uh, Adelante is an organization, Fairly Qualified Health Center, and that has an incredible CEO that's very visionary who indicated that she had an interest and passion in community wellness. And so it was very easily adopted that she become 
a member of this brainstorm as we were looking at the vision of the future. And then simultaneously, we interacted with uh, Brian and team on, okay, while we were looking at the county owning it at the time, uh, let's not hesitate on putting that vision to work. What would it look like with the different segments of what we could create together? And it was amazing as you started looking at that being the central focus with all these different partners, even when you broaden it out to the trails that this could connect to and really looking at the health and well-being in a, in a broader uh, stroke, uh, it came together very nicely. And I will have to say a little humorous thing that being here over three years now, uh, prior to that massive flood that we had, I kept looking at the basins going, this should be no problem. I've never seen uh, any water standing there. And then, of course, we had that 100-year uh, flood, as I would call it, and went, okay, there's a reason we need to plan this effectively. Uh, of course, it dissipated very quickly, too. So we knew that really a park that would uh, accommodate both needs was something that uh, could be very uh, appealing for the community based on the voice of, of the community, plus partnering with uh, all the different entities you see above. And then, as Brian mentioned, uh, looking at what we can do with the county and what's in front of you tonight, I think would be a great, great uh, step forward in the vision of the future. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm good, just if you put this out tonight, any comment from the council that you wanted? Now we're at the end. Okay, at the end. All right, then. Okay. Didn't know if you had something personal with this, so we'll wait. Stan actually uh, covered quite a few things in his remarks, and thank you, Stan. I'm going to hit on a couple of things. One is, as you'll notice, a copy of the Parks, Recreation, Trails, and Open Space Master Plan is adopted by Council. Within this plan, it actually does recognize the wellness uh, park basins as a strategy for trying to promote health and wellness in the community. And you'll, uh, you'll notice that we have a few bullets in there, future recreation corridor, multi-use, I have a map there in, a, in just a moment that really shows that. Corporate wellness village, family health amenities, and gardens. Um, so to illustrate that best, and staff, I haven't used Elmo in years, so I'm going to put, if we could get Elmo up there, and someone may have to adjust this for me. Hey, look, never mind, staff. I got this down pat. Yeah, <laughs> Could you make it just a little more well, clear? It's a little blurry. <laughs> clear? That I could not do. Could someone make that somebody, clear? I, I knew that. <laughs> you did be better. Helping? My eyes are failing. Ah, oh, perfect. You. Why, thank yes, you. I can. <laughs> just a touch of, yeah. Now I know how it works. Um, so what you'll see in here, it really, it's about the trail connectivity. You'll see Bullard Wash Trail. The uh, blue dotted line is, uh, it's an existing trail network as part of the Sun Trail Network. And what we did as a, a um, behind the scenes, we actually looked at what could be in these basins. So it was an opportunity to get together and scheme. And, and the, I, I must point out these are concepts. It certainly can change, but it's still good to have concepts as you enter into this. So uh, the first one over here, ah, actually that doesn't work, does it? Because this is Elmo. Number one right here is, that is uh, what we call corporate wellness village. Uh, number two, right next to it, Action Sports Village. And then three, you'll notice a connectivity, as uh, Stan talked about earlier, between Cancer Treatment Center and the basins. Number four is a des uh, could be a desert wellness garden. Uh, so that was a concept for those areas. And then you go to the east side of Litchfield Road, you get into number five, and I'll work my way that way. So number five is what we call the commons. It's really a community gathering, could be a community gathering place. Uh, six is a West Valley Hospital active living and community wellness. And that could be everything from ambulatory patients to um, uh, you know some, some of their patients that could really use uh, um, some type of recreation there and, and really open it up for education beyond that. Number seven, Family Activity Village, and then number eight is what they call the Performance Village, which it can really be any kind of outdoor activities that uh, perhaps might be a little bit more um, active, if you will. So concepts, and again, you'll notice uh, um, we had a couple of folks involved in that, John Kuhn, and then also um, we had uh, Norris uh, that did this pro bono for us as we got together. So that just gives you a background on that. If I could get the presentation back, please. There we go. So 
I do want to stop here for a second. A lot of organizations have been involved in this. You, you heard a little bit from Stan. And, but I would tell you it would not be possible with truly the outstanding leadership and commitment of, of the county. And you know, one of the things I was reflecting, I have been at the city for 22 years. Uh, in my mind, this is one of the more exciting projects and certainly one where I've seen uh, just outstanding leadership firsthand with the county. The resolve, I would call it the stilly resolve to make this happen. So what I would say, it begins at the top, and we have the top person here tonight. Um, so it is my privilege to introduce the chairman of the Board of Supervisors, Clint Hickman. <laughs> we just want we we just wanted to wait till you talk before you did that. We did that, okay? Okay. Hey, I was. Uh, I'd like to come and address the board as a Goodyear resident at 2650 North 143rd Avenue. Uh, I'm in Joe Pazillo's district, and I would like to say, Joe, why do the women have you pushed off so far? To is that, is that for photographic for purposes? Yeah, there's a reason for it. All right. <laughs> Look, I just wanted to come and, and say thank you I, and, and address, uh, I think, it's very nice of you, Brian, to, to say, you know, it starts from the top, but really um, it doesn't. It starts, from, it starts from other levels of government where we start seeing things on what we can do better for our citizens. And, and I think this truly uh, is something that speaks well for all of us. Um, Goodyear needs parks, it needs trails, it needs community amenities. And we had this piece of land sitting there, and I'm glad you brought it up. The central purpose of that of those basins is to keep keep water going somewhere instead of swamping uh, swamping I-10 when it rains really hard. So, with this plan, that will still be happening, but instead of it going into scrubland and everything else that that uh, the county taxpayers wonders why this is not maintained very well, we don't maintain these structures for aesthetic purposes. We maintain them for the, what, what they're for, which is water retention away from I-10. Um, it was my honor to be a part of that meeting we had over at uh, the hospital, at the Abrazo Hospital, and talking with Matt McGuire from Cancer Treatment Centers of America to let them in on the vision and what this, and what this could be, because we are going to need to help each other get there and get the, the ball crossed over the goal line. Uh, Matt McGuire and I are friends. Again, he's president of Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Our sons play on the same baseball team. And if they don't come through, I will bench his son. <laughs> Make sure you tell him. Oh, you tell him. All right, so there's some real power here at play. But I wanted to thank the flood control district has been great. I think you guys know how many man hours yes. uh, they've been taking our former uh, our former county manager who retired last week thought very highly of this project too, Tom Manos, and he wants to see, he wanted to see this get crossed past the finish line, but government is not known for running fast, um, but hopefully it runs at the speed of doing some great things in the future for, for all of us. So I thank you guys for your leadership on this. I look forward to you coming in front of my board and uh, talking about it. Oh, one other thing. When, when you're on the election trail and people talk about East Valley, West Valley, and, they, you know, and then you're, they ask you, how come West Valley doesn't have amenities? I call, this is a project that when people say, why don't you guys have something like Indian Bend, which is a flood control district that Scottsdale took part of, and it's a beautiful mm -hmm. uh, community amenity now Goodyear's going to have something like this. We just need to, we just need to work hard and, and get it to, to fruition. And that means you, Georgia Lord, uh, Mayor, you better get out there. Work boots on for Joanne Osborne. I know she can mow lawns. I've seen it. Um, so, again, thank you guys for all your leadership and your hard work that you do for this community. I appreciate it. And, Brian, thanks for your leadership. And let's get this project done. Thank all you right. very much. Thank you, Clint. So let's, let's get into what does this really entail. We're talking 129 acres. The, uh, the county is providing it and just, I have to tell you, it just blew us away when they came back with the nominal cost. We started to take up a collection and, and I think we were advised that probably is not a good idea. Uh, but $233, we estimate the closing cost at about 10,000. 
Now, Council, we did fund $75,000 that's in this current year's budget that was for the master plan mm -hmm. of the basins, so we'll be using uh, those proceeds to be able to fund the closing costs. The other thing that was a commitment on the part of Council uh, already committed is to take over the $35,000 that we estimate for, for ongoing maintenance. Um, so that that is, uh, uh, and I, I do want to point out exactly, you know, what um, Clint Hickman pointed out is that it was not their responsibility to maintain them in, in a, an aesthetic fashion. It was just to let water roll in there. Um, I, I believe that their, uh, their maintenance costs were about 15000 per year. So to put that in perspective, we will be um, increasing the uh, amount of maintenance that goes on to about 35000 a year. <coughs> so this is what we get. This is a, a great slide, and it shows what happened here. All those that are in blue, you'll see the acreage amounts, 20, 15, 33. Those are called excess areas. That's actually what got appraised. Um, and then you'll see the no-fee ones that are uh, to still remain primarily as retention areas. So when we had the floods that come in, it would be primarily those basin areas that would be uh, uh, estimated enough to be able to handle the flows that come in there. Um, certainly, that doesn't mean you instantly plop anything over here because those basins are contiguous, but it gives you a chance to, to maybe do some different things uh, within those um, blue parcels. So this is what we're looking at, and, and you'll, you'll see what the designation's there now. So really the last main point is on the governance structure. We realize that there's an opportunity here to, to involve a lot of stakeholders, and this is clearly beyond uh, the, what the city's expertise is in doing a project of this size. Um, so we had an opportunity. We raise our hands a lot when there are free studies that go around. And Arizona State University, they actually had, uh, in September 2015, we had submitted to have this studied um, by, uh, a, for a policy project by the Arizona State University School of Public Affairs Policy Studio class. This was in concert with the Moran Institute for Public Policy. So we had some very bright um, students. I call them students, but I have to tell you, they did a lot of hard work on this. Um, so we were selected for that, and they actually undertook this project on the governance portion in March of 2016. And they presented uh, their best practices. They did a lot of research. They found that this is really leading edge to do wellness parks around the country. And they only found five projects that kind of had some similarities to what we're trying to do, but none of them exactly. So they did that research. Those five areas, just real quickly, uh, the Medical Mile in Little Rock, Arkansas, Clyde Warren Park in Dallas, Texas, Crescent Moon Ranch in Sedona. Notice when I said ranch, I had a little slang there. I learned that. I grew up in Scottsdale. I was close to the Cowboys. Um, Green Seattle, and that is in Seattle. Uh, Mayor's Fitness Council in Corpus Christi, Texas. So those five areas, uh, they did a terrific job in looking at what could actually um, fit with this. Everything from looking at how you um, have a uh, uh, kind of a management structure, to infrastructure, to the improvements, to the maintenance. Uh, um, so it really was a lot of uh, hard work that they did for us. So tonight, I believe that uh, Fatima Bernard is here. <coughs> and Chris, yeah. Oh, Chris Heider. Yes. Uh, so Chris is a professor over the group. Um, so it's good to have him as well under his leadership. And they had a couple of presentations to us along the way. So uh, just to kind of close on this, it's that the wellness park in our minds could be something really world class um, because, and the reason I say that, ASU said there's not a whole lot of projects like this out there right now. So we don't know where it goes from here. Uh, we have ideas, uh, but it will take a, a lot of hard work to um, get us there. But I have to tell you, there's a lot of optimism as well. So the next steps is, uh, uh, I don't want to be presumptuous, if council does approve this tonight, um, then we would go forward to May 18th to the, as uh, Supervisor Hickman pointed out, uh, that we go to the, their board um, and, and they'll be considering this IGA at 9.30 a.m. on May the 18th. 
Then we're looking at a 90-day close, about a 90-day close on this. So we would actually take ownership of the basins August 30th. And then it's really over the next 12 months that we want to keep moving this forward. And that is to establish a governance structure and also complete the master plan associated with that. So uh, with that, Mayor and Council, that uh, concludes my presentation and, and the remarks from both Stan Holm and Clint Hickman. Thank you very much. Questions. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Does anyone in the audience want to speak? All right, then will the city clerk please read resolution 16-1758 by title only, please? Adopt resolution number 16-1758, approving an intergovernmental agreement with the Flood Control District of Maricopa County, accepting certain easements, leases, and other real estate conveyances related to the acquisition of certain property. Thank you. Could I have a motion a second, please? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Vice Mayor Loretano and a second by... Councilman Campbell. Roll, I, I open for council discussion. Councilman Fazil. You know what? Uh, this you've talked about for quite a while, and I'm glad we're to, at this point. I know with the partners that have come aboard, um, this has got to turn out to be a success, the quality and the commitment. And I'm really looking forward to when you come up with a master plan on what this is going to look like. You know, it's interesting. I drive by that all the time, and so does so do a lot of us that are sitting out there in the audience. And you always wonder, hmm, what we could use that for? Now we have a plan. And uh, not only that, you have partners on board. Thank you, Clint. I really appreciate the county. I really appreciate everybody stepping up, the different health organizations, ASU, everybody. Um, and, and again, with the, with the quality of the people we got on board, this is going to be a guaranteed success. And I really appreciate all the efforts of everybody that's put time in on this, staff including. Thank you very much. Vice Mayor Loretano. I, I want to echo the thanks. I think this is an absolutely wonderful um, project. I want to thank Clinton, the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors, for, for having the foresight to see it not just as a retention area and, and seeing what can be done with that, and Abrazo and Cancer Treatment and all the partners. I, I think this is really going to be a great thing for our city, especially in that central portion. Um, there's so much that can be done, and I think we were talking about infill and bringing neighborhoods, more neighborhoods in that area, that'll just be a short drive to a great gathering place for our city. So I am looking very forward to this and I see this as probably a model and probably a way that other cities can look at these retention areas that otherwise like what Joe was saying, just what do you do with them? I think this is a great way to showcase how you can use that land um, for the community. And so it's kind of dual purpose and has a great high community value. So thank you everybody. Councilman Osborne. Oh, thank you. Well, I have to tell you, I love the vision. And, uh, you know, we, we get asked quite often by citizens and, and just people on the outside, why aren't you guys trying more public-private partnerships? Why aren't you trying those things? And so, you know, it's great when something comes together such as this. And quite frankly, you know, even the pessimist that says that's not going to work, that's too much money, even if there's somebody that says that, at the end of the day, it's still an area for our citizens that gives, gives them, and as you said, Brian, this is something that we're going to be um, increasing the maintenance of to, to give it a place for our citizens. And, and I think that um, as the future rolls forward, I hope the vision and the goal work. I do. I, I really would like to see it happen. But even if it didn't, this is an asset to our city to our citizens, and if we continue with the full backing of health and wellness as the whole um, priority of it, I think it's going to be a winner. So I'm, I'm very excited about it. I'm thankful to the county and, uh, and to the partners that have come forward and said, hey, we want to be part of this. And Brian, and I really appreciate everything that you have, have seen within this. And I also thank ASU for, for stepping up and, and helping us find a way to put all this together. So it's wonderful. Appreciate it. Councilman Campbell. Well, I don't know if I'm more excited that the city is going to have 129 more acres that we own or that we're going to get a park, that we're going to get a, an area that we can use from now forever. Um, it's just so amazing to see a vision come together, and I know we're at the very beginning of it, 
but without the cooperation from the flood district or the flood control district, the county board of supervisors, Abrazo, CTCA, Adelant, ASU, us, it would not have worked. But I want to thank everyone for doing it. I know it's going to take a lot of uh, work, a lot of cooperation, a lot of vision, a lot of trust. And I'm sure that we're going to, um, once we get our master plan, then we can decide which entities we're going to start with. But in the long run, I think the city and the patients and the folks that will use this are going to love it. And they're going to be so grateful that we have preserved the land for them to use, even if it is a flood basin, because once it floods and the water goes down, we can use it again. So thank you so much. And Brian, thank you for your, your vision and your excitement. Whoever brought it to you or whoever you took it to, someone had to come up with the idea. And I, I don't know who to thank, but we, we do thank you very much. Councilman Hallman. Now I know how you feel, Georgia, when you're the last one to express <laughs> there. It, it's really hard to add to that. Oops add to that. However, I do want to say I'm such a strong advocate uh, for these private-public partnerships. Thank you, Clint, for taking the leadership and, and getting your peers to understand how important this is. Um, thank you to our hospitals. Um, they'd already proven what great uh, community partners they are, but this is a real demonstration, and it's a win-win, and there's nothing, there's nothing that is better for the partnership to create win situations um, all the way around. I don't see a loser, and that's the kind of partnerships we've got to be looking toward and for, and Brian, I think this is, this is your vision. It's not your vision. Well, it should be. It's, I, I need to be very clear. There are a whole lot of folks that had this vision, and, and I'm a, obviously a, a piece of that, but there are a whole lot of folks, and tried tried to give them credit um, earlier, So, uh, but thank you for that. Yeah, it is, it is and I'm very, and as you know, I'm very excited about this because I think um, the, the creativity engaged reflects very well on everybody involved. And the idea that this is seen by everybody who travels Interstate 10, what an image builder for us and for the state of Arizona. So um, appreciate all of you. Thank you. Well, Brian, thank you for bringing this to us. I want to thank John Kuhn for, yeah, I kind of tweaking this idea, got you interested. Uh, Clint, you're great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank your uh, fellow workers, the County Board of Supervisors, how wonderful this is. Stan Holm, uh, you, you always make a great presentation. Thank you tonight. You had just the right words, and I really appreciate it. And, of course, Matt McGuire. He's not, he, Matt's not here tonight, Alan, right? Yes. Alan, Alan Swain, Swain is here. Yes, for yes. Yeah. Please extend our thanks. Um, it's just a, a wonderful event uh, that we had tonight of explaining what it, how we're going to improve the quality of life for our citizens and the surrounding area. Because um, there are people going to that hospital from all over the West Valley. And this is uh, quite an attribute to have and usable. So I, I'm very, very, I'm just very, very thrilled by it. So thank you for your tenacity and persistence and putting this together, Brian, to be able to present it tonight. All right. Uh, Bill, do you have anything to say? No, there's not much to say from this end that hasn't already been said. All right. Bill, thank you very much. Okay, so could we have a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Councilmember Pazillo? Aye. Councilmember Campbell? Aye. Councilmember Stepp? Aye. Councilmember Holman? Aye. Vice Mayor Loritano? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes 7 0. Thank you very much. Okay, the next item is going to be a public hearing to consider the approval of rezoning for Saraville East, adopting an automotive and related commercial ARC overlay to the Palm Valley Phase 8 planned uh, area development. Open for public hearing. Steve Karachi, Planner 3, will present. 
Thank you, Mayor, Council members. This is a rezoning for six acres right here that's part of a larger project known as Saraville East. Uh, this six acres to the east, we have future commercial area, currently zoned ag right now. South is I-10, south of that is existing residential development within Canyon Trail. To the west and north is surrounding area within Palm Valley Phase A. All of this area here is mixed use commercial uh, McDowell Road, and then to the north of that, we have a mix of uses. We have neighborhood commercial, uh, high density residential, and then surrounding that, single family. This is the Palm Valley Phase 8 PAD land use plan. That PAD was approved in 2005. And again, this plan shows the mixed use commercial here surrounding the current parcel here. And this right here, again, is the six acre parcel. And what we have is basically three different parts to the rezoning. We have a piece here, 2.2 acres, that was already in the PAD. So with this parcel here, we're rezoning from the PAD <coughs> mixed use to the PAD mixed use with uh, requested automotive and related commercial overlay. These two pieces here were not originally within the PAD. They were purchased from the flood control district. So this 3.8 acre piece here is going to be rezoned to PAD mixed use with the architect with the automotive overlay. And then finally, this 0.1 acre piece here that was also not in the PAD. So this one is going to be zoned to PAD mixed use. This little piece here will not have the automotive overlay over it, just these two right here. And within the Palm Valley Phase 8 PAD, that mixed use commercial basically equates to the city C2 uh, commercial. So that zoning classification is the standard one that you see for all our retail and service uses. Also requested is that automotive related commercial overlay. And that is placed on these properties just to, for the applicant's request with that was just to ensure that you had for automotive related uses, the sales, rental, and lease, but also repair and servicing of those automotive vehicles. Because this is a public hearing, we did have a neighborhood meeting on February 25th. We did advertise for our 500 feet. We did include the HOAs for Palm Valley and Canyon Trails within that notice. At the meeting, we did not have any public attendance. On April 20th, uh, we went before the Planning and Zoning Commission. At that meeting, the commission unanimously voted to recommend uh, approval to the city council. There was no public opposition voiced at the hearing. As stipulated, uh, we do find this rezoning is consistent with our general plan and that it will be compatible with the surrounding area. A uh, staff and a planning commission, we are recommending approval of this rezoning request. Uh, with the mayor, that concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions. The applicant is also here. Uh, they, didn't, they do not have a formal presentation, but are also available for questions. Thank you very much. Are there any speaker cards? Um, I do re realize tonight that Troy Mortensen and Bomb Bombar Bom Bombar are here this evening. Do they want to speak at this time, or available for questions, Mayor? All right. It, if it, they want to speak now, or we're going to put it later. Whatever you want, we'll call them afterwards. Well, that'll make it easier on you. Okay. I'm going to close the public hearing. Will the city clerk please read Ordinance 16-1332 by title only, please? Adopt Ordinance Number 16-1332, rezoning approximately six acres generally located north of Interstate 10 between Pebble Creek Parkway and Cerebral Avenue as follows. 3.8 acres from agricultural to planned area development, mixed-use commercial with an automotive and related commercial overlay. 2.2 acres from planned area development, mixed-use commercial to planned area development, mixed-use commercial with an automotive and related commercial overlay and 0.1 acre from agricultural to planned area development mixed use commercial, amending the zoning map of the city of Goodyear, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Could I have a motion a second, please? So move. 
Second. I heard a motion by Councilman Campbell and a second by Vice Mayor Laura Tano. Open for council discussion. No council I, discussion? No, I had a question. Councilman Osborne. Thank you. I was actually, Steve, looking for which exhibit it was, but it was about the uses. Now, I, I understand um, the automotive uses and how they're zoned, um, but there was one section that spoke about uses within those areas, and one of them said a swap meet, swap mart. I'm trying to figure out what that was under. And that was my only question I had, was why was that within everything else that was stated? Go ahead. Mayor, council members. The staff report does mention swap meets under the section where they're talking about the automotive and related commercial overlay and a request for special events. And that list was just some of the things that doing our research, we found that the dealerships and these franchises are now expanding into. And you'll see the other uh, customers appreciation events, things like that. So that's, that was just a list to try to include, I guess, all the activities that we saw that could happen under that special event. Okay, so that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what is, is projected to be here. That was just um, those possibilities for what could be seen. I mean, I, I have no problem with any of the other things. The swap meet is the one item that really drew my attention. Yeah. And so yeah. I guess I needed a little understanding about what we were talking about with that. And um, I guess that's all you can tell me is that's what you found in your research. But normally we, we do have a listing uh, when certain uh, zoning areas, we have a list of things that could be in that area, and that happens to be one of them on that list. Is that correct? Mayor Council, that's, yes. That's the norm. That's, okay, that's okay. what I needed to understand. Okay. Was that, 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 I, I thought you were Wasn't trying, that and what I didn't, they were I didn't saying was going to be here. getting that over to her, but, you oh. know, if you look through the book, you'll see on each one of those, they just have a long list of what could come to that area. So Okay. All right. Is everybody's questions answered? Okay. So let's have a roll call vote, please. Council Member Pizzillo? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Stipp? Aye. Council Member Holman? Aye. Vice Mayor Loritano? Aye. Council Member Osborne? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes 7 0. Well, Troy and Bob, thank you very much. Thank you for bringing forth. Uh, I think we're all very excited about this. All right, let's go on to 7.3. Those two items are, are, will be presented tonight together, and then we'll, action will be taken on them separately. Um, Item 7.3 is a public hearing to consider the amendment to Canyon Trail's planned area development at La Ventilla, Phase 3. And then item 7.4 is a request to consider approving a preliminary plat La Ventilla, La Ventilla Phase 3. So I'm going to open the public hearing. And Steve, Planner 2, will present. Steve, you're on again. Thank you again, Mayor. We do have the two items for you tonight plat and a PAD amendment. And this is La Ventilla phase three here, I-10 Cerival, surrounding it to the east and to the south, existing development, single family development within Canyon Trails. To the west, we have our water facility. Uh, we also have La Ventilla phases one and two. And those were before you back in 2013. Again, same development, uh, given the success that the applicant has had with phase one that they are moving forward now with phase three. And then to the north is I-10 here. And again, this exhibit just shows this is phase three here. To the west, we have phases one and two. Uh, this will continue the development standards, uh, the product, everything that was started in phase one, they're gonna bring it across Cerival here to the east. And the action tonight is this parcel in 1999 is designated as townhome within the Canyon Trails PAD. And that designation has different development standards. It also allows a density between 8 and 15 units per acre. Uh, what the applicant would like to do is more of a court home development. 
And so that's the request tonight to transition to the court home land use. And that land use allows between six and seven dwelling units per acre. And this development will here will come in at about 6.76. Uh, we have 100 court homes planned here. Uh, main access and only main access for public is right here at Cerival. It'll be a restricted access, no left outs from this entrance here. Uh, there'll also be an emergency access only point at this location here connecting to Cerival. Uh, we'll have one and two story mix of court homes within the development. Uh, all the lots along the east here and the south will be single story homes, except for these two right here. These can be two story, but they'll provide a larger 20 foot buffer right here. But again, the applicant is proposing this to maintain a compatibility with the existing residences to the east and to the south. Uh, open space, they'll have an open space here. They'll have a Ramada a picnic area, a grass area here. They'll also have access to a, a trail system here. They will construct this trail here, which will connect to the existing trail system within Canyon Trails. For each of the residences, they will are planning to have a two-car garage. There'll also be uh, 51 visitor spaces throughout the development. And this is the pod layout that we've seen before. This is a six pod unit here. Again, all the garages access the motor court and then the motor court accesses the private street here. And again, with Laventia phase three, they're gonna continue the use and benefit easements. So the yard can go beyond the lot line that's right here to provide the residents with a larger yard. And we'll also have the four unit pods here as well. And this is just rendition of a single story product that's planned. And this is a two story product. Because of the public hearing for the PAD amendment, we did have a neighborhood meeting on February 23rd. We did notice all of the neighborhoods surrounding this property. We did not have anyone from the public attend a neighborhood meeting. Uh, April 20th, we did go before the planning commission. Uh, the commission did vote to forward a recommendation of approval to the council. No one from the public voiced any opposition to the project. Uh, we do find the PAD amendment is consistent with the general plan that it will be compatible with the surrounding area. We do find the preliminary plat is compatible with the PAD and consistent with the city subdivision regulations. Uh, therefore, staff and the planning commission, we are recommending approval tonight of both items, the PAD amendment and the preliminary plat. Uh, with that, Mayor, that concludes my presentation. I'm available for questions. Uh, the applicant is also available for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? Okay, will the city clerk please read ordinance 16-1331 by title only, please? Mayor, can you please close the public hearing? Oh, oh, sorry about that. The speakers are finished. We will now close the public hearing. It's so good to have a city clerk. Thank you. Will the city clerk please read ordinance 16-1331 by title only, please? Adopt ordinance number 16-1331, approving an, an amendment to the Canyon Trails final planned area development to change the land use on 14.79 acres from PAD Town Home to PAD Court Home to facilitate the development of Lawn Ventia Phase 3, generally located at the southeast corner of Interstate 10 and Cerebral Avenue, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Could I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. Second. I heard a, a motion by Councilman Holman and a second by Vice, uh, by uh, Councilman Pazillo. Roll call vote, please. Oh, open for council discussion. I'm sure you want to. Vice Mayor? I, I just have a question, and I, I'm not sure if I'm reading something right. I think it was Exhibit C that you had up here. I think it was the landscape one. Is the only road out... This, the one, is that the only road in and out of this area? Mayor Council, yes, there is only one point of access for this development, and that's this one right there. And you said something, I wasn't sure if I caught it right, that there's going to be no left turn out? 
correct with in reviewing the intersection, making it a restricted X or no left outs, it would operate an acceptable level of service. If we had full access, it was determined that we would probably have to signalize this intersection and given its proximity to I-10, the better outcome would be just to restrict the left outs at this intersection. I guess this is my concern. If I live in that neighborhood and I wanna to go to Fry's, I'm not gonna drive all the way around and I'm afraid people are either gonna make illegal left turns or make a lot of U-turns and I don't know if there's a way to solve that, but your closest grocery store is a left out. So I can't see people going all the way around the freeway. They're gonna be hanging U's or going into the other neighborhood. So I'm not sure if there is a way to fix that or, or how to make that work. Mayor Council, in, in looking at that same situation with wanting to make a left out, it was determined given that we have 100 homes here, the, turn, the traffic study did not have as many left turns coming out to where the better outcome was restrict those left turns. The residents would be inconvenienced and have to make their U-turn or go another way. The worst outcome was putting a signal here. And then, again, given the proximity to I-10, for better traffic flow, it was better to restrict the access and not signalize the intersection. Rebecca, do you want to say anything? I saw you standing there, so. Well, and Steve, you did a nice job explaining, so. And, and thank you, Mayor and Council. And yes, Steve did a perfect job explaining that. But I would add that um, it, it's not only the proximity to I-10, but also to the Portland signal. And so ultimately, if we saw that there was an issue there with people making illegal turns, we could add um, some type of um, uh, marking or, um, and I'm trying to think the median may be configured in a way that would disallow the left turnout. Um, but I do understand your concern, and we would absolutely make sure that the that there would not be an issue because safety is of our primary concern. I know that I was just wondering if that was the only way. If we will look into it and kind of keep an eye on it. Yes. Thank you, Councilman Bazillo. My concern is is really with that entrance, and, and it's probably more for the fire department, and I guess engineering both. But there's only one entrance. Is that typically what we have for neighborhoods? Because the problem I have is. If there's an accident there, it happens to be at that entrance, and something goes wrong inside where the fire has to get in there to service somebody on an emergency with only one way in, any concerns that you had with that setup? Because I could see disaster written all over that. I mean, I don't know what the odds are, but the fact that you only have one way in, just kind of, there's two ways in? Uh, thank you, Councilmember Pazillo, and yes, um, if you'll see on just north, uh, so as you approach I-10, there's a, I'm sorry, right here. This is an emergency access. So it wouldn't allow the public to access at that point, but for fire can uh, enter and exit at that location if they need to. So that's large enough for a fire truck to get through? In Absolutely. Case of, okay. The emergency accesses uh, meet certain requirements, and we ensure that they do. Okay, thank you. Mayor. Yeah, Councilman Campbell. So, Rebecca, are we going to allow a left turn in? Yes, in this case, a left turn. So, right in, right out, and left in. The left in is allowed because they only have to cross uh, one direction. With a left out, you're having to cross one direction and approach another, and so that's where the safety concern comes in. Okay, thanks. Councilman Holland? No? Anybody else? Thank you very much. I think we're ready for a vote. Roll call vote, please. Councilmember Campbell? Aye. Councilmember Stipp? Aye. Councilmember Holman? Aye. Vice Mayor Loritano? Aye. Councilmember Osborne? Nay. Councilmember Pazillo? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes 6 1. All right, we're 7.4 to consider approving the request for the preliminary plat for a lot of Ventilia, phase three. Are there any speaker cards? Thank you. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? Could I please have a motion and a second to approve a request for the preliminary plat for La Ventilia Phase 3, subject to stipulations? So moved. Second. 
I've heard a motion from Councilman Campbell and a second from Councilman Oz, Oz, no, Councilman Holman. Open for council discussion. No discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have Yeah, thanks, that's right. But the ayes have it. Thank you, Joanne. All right, I think that did our evening. So let's go to information items. And does council have any comments or accommodations or reports you they'd like to make? No? Um, nobody has anything to say tonight? No, oh, no, well, no, I'm going to say a little, a little bit. I, I'm uh, glad everybody was there for the Solar Impulse. That was a, a wonderful event for us. Uh, but I want to bring to attention that um, we have an individual who won the Small Business Award for the state of Arizona, and that's Paul Smiley. Awesome. So I happened to attend and sit at his table at the luncheon at the Biltmore. Um, and it was, uh, I have to tell you, we, I want you to be sure you're calling him, shaking his hand. That's quite an accomplishment uh, for Mr. Smiley to make for his business. So I, I did want to mention that one. So, City Manager, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So we do have one follow-up item that was with our resident, Michael Jones, uh, to, and, and we'll uh, meet with him uh, as soon as we can to really talk about the processes. Uh, related to our trash service. And then I do have one announcement. It'll go in my weekly report, but I want to give a heads up to council that uh, westbound I-10 freeway will be closed Friday, uh, May 13th to Saturday, May 14th from 10 p.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, the full closure westbound I-10 at Dysert for the installation of dynamic message signs and loop detectors. Uh, so Van Buren and McDowell are going to be very busy. Those will be the detour routes and traffic can re-enter westbound I-10 at Litchfield Road. And then westbound I-10 on ramp closed at Dysert for installation of, of the message signs and loop detectors uh, will be part of that. So engineering staff, they'll program the traffic signal controllers during that time on our arterial roadways to, to really help move traffic uh, along those detour routes. But uh, Mayor and Council, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. The inquiry for the city manager. Will that affect Saraville? Will the detour be taking people? It off should not affect Saraville um, because it, it again it'll be primarily a Dysert and then move them on down to uh, Litchfield Road. So um, it would not affect Saraville. All right. No other follow-ups. Okay. The future meeting uh, will be a CFD meeting and a regular meeting on May 23rd, 2016, starting at five o'clock. We're going to adjourn this, adjourn this meeting. Meeting adjourned. Going to join it. Adjourn it. <laughs>